Hi, this is Dr. Minnick, and this is going to be Lab 3, Transient Analysis. All right, so this is the lab that we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing this transient analysis, and what we're looking for is the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. So when we close the switch, then the capacitor is going to charge up. When we open the switch, the capacitor is going to discharge, and we see a different resistance over here when it's discharging than when it's charging uh, when it's charging up initially. So we expect a different time constant in each, in each case. There's separate videos on how to do the analytical and the multi-SIM on this, so definitely check that video out if, you, uh, if you're not sure about how to solve this. Today we're going to look at how to do this in the lab. Okay, so I've gone and measured these resistor values already. So we've got our breadboard hooked up to the negative here and the positive here on the top rail. And we're actually going to make use of the positive rail as the positive side of the supply and the negative rail at the bottom as, the, uh, as, as our pseudo ground in the circuit. So this negative rail at the bottom we want to be our negative which means we've got to jump from the top negative to the bottom negative to connect those. And here is uh, here's our 97.7 ohm resistor. So we're going to go from the top rail here over to somewhere where we're going to be able to switch. And now for the switch we're just going to use a wire that we're going to connect and disconnect. So here's the switch, and that's what the switch is going to look like when it's closed. Then from this spot, we're going to need a capacitor to ground. So we'll do that with our one microfarad capacitor here. Connect in and connect to ground. Okay. And then we need also from this spot a parallel connection. So we're going to go from there over to another spot with two different resistors. So we're going to go with a 100 ohm resistor and that should be this one here. And then in parallel with that we're going to have a 47. Then we're going to go from this other spot, the other side of that, 147, to ground with a 68 ohm. Okay, so now we've built the circuit. So now we're going to need to power this up and also fire up the scope to look at the signals once, once things are working. So let's turn on the power supply there. We'll check out the voltage is around 5 and we need to see what the current is, so first we'll turn that down for safety and then check roughly what current we've got set on here. So we don't need that, this to act as a current supply, but we are going to need some current available for this. So if you figure this is equivalent to 100 ohm and this is equivalent to 100 ohm, the peak current is going to be right when we're first charging the capacitor when it's acting like an uh, like a closed, like a short circuit, right? So that means it's going to short out this 100 ohm and we're going to have 5 volts across 100 to ground, essentially. So that means we need a peak current of 5 over 100, so about 50 milliamp, and to be safe we can set this to around 100 milliamp to make sure that we're not going to be current limited and affecting our timing like that. So this can do factor of 2 more current than it needs to, and, uh, and this, this level of current should be safe um, if, we're, if we're careful. We can still damage some of these resistors if we put too much current through them, so we'll just have to be careful that everything makes sense when we're hooking it up. So next up is to check the voltage and get that to as close to 5 as we can. So we've got our digital multimeter over here. This is a, a different style than we've seen before, so we put it on volts and then the 20 range to measure up to 5 because the 2 range is not going to be enough. So we'll connect common ground over to the negative here and then the positive will go in the volts terminal. And right now we've got 5.44 so we'll just adjust that to get as close to 5 as we can. Pretty good. Then connect it up to the circuit and we certainly don't expect anything to get current limited when we connect it up to the circuit. So we can keep monitoring the voltage and make sure that this doesn't drop when it's connected 
or something maybe strange about what's going on with our circuit. Stays the same. We can open the switch and close the switch and no change. We can also connect the circuit up directly and double check that the resistor network is set up correctly by looking at the voltage divider. So what we expect when the switch is closed, if this is 100 and this is 100, is to get half of this voltage across the capacitor after it's fully charged. So we expect 2.5 volts there. Let's tap in with our multimeter to measure that. Yep, 2.5. So this likely means that the resistors are set up correctly. If we mixed up something, like maybe we put a, a 68 instead of the 100 and swap that, or put, uh, put like a 1K here instead, then we wouldn't get 2.5 volts for the voltage divider. So that's all set up, and now we can move on to measuring timing events with this, with the scope. Okay, so now we're going to try and capture the charging and discharging of the capacitor using the oscilloscope here. Now we expect that the capacitor is going to go to 0 volts when the switch is open and limit to 2.5 volts when the switch is closed. If you use these resistors and these resistors and this capacitance, you find a time constant of 50 microseconds. So that's roughly what we expect is rising should take about 50 microseconds. When it's falling, it only sees these resistors. The time constant should be different. There it should be 100 microseconds. So let's see if we can capture that stuff on here. So what we'll need for this setup is a scope probe. We're going to connect that here to channel 1 and then connect the ground of this after making sure that we are on 1x here rather than 10x or reference to the other side of the capacitor and then connect up there. So, <clears throat> looking at the screen here, we can move our channel 1 down and see if we can fit on one screen. Not quite. Um, we'll make, need to make sure that we're on DC coupling, a low enough volts per division to actually be able to see it. So now we are at 500 millivolts per division and that means we are limited to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 divisions up, which puts us to 5 times 0.5 or 2.5 millivolts. Okay, great. If we disconnect the switch, then it goes down to 0, and connecting it will bring it up to 2.5 again. If you were on AC coupling, then it's just going to stay at 0 no matter what, uh, whether you open the switch or not. Right? It's looking now for um, for DC rejection. It's looking for non-DC signals. So we need to be on DC coupling in order to capture what we're trying to capture today. The other thing we need to do is go into the trigger menu and make sure we're on channel 1 and set the mode to normal and then use the level here when we're on this menu to raise up a little bit above. See that little arrow there? Raise up a little bit above the zero, so a little bit above our ground. Then we're going to find when the slope, uh, when, the, when the signal rises above that, so we disconnect, and then when we connect again, we can get a rising event. Now that one doesn't look that great. Let's expand out the time here and see if we can make a nice looking one. That's look, that looks pretty good. Okay. So we're still limiting to 2.5. We've checked the, the limit is working correctly. Now let's see if we can check the time constant. So to find the time constant, what we'll need, let's uh, re-trigger that. Okay. What we'll need is a good measurement of where the 58, whoops, where the 50, Uh, we'll need a good measurement of where the signal has risen to um, to 63% of its final value. 63% is because when we go 1 minus e to the negative 1, then we end up with 63% for that. So in this case, 63% times 2.5, which is the final value, gives us 1.58. So we're looking for 1.58 volts in the height here. So first let's go on cursor and we'll change it to 
voltage cursors and look for a difference between our ground and the other cursor that gives us 1.58. So we'll make sure the source is on channel 1. We've got a delta is 1.96 there. 1.58. So we're looking for right now where the other, uh, which, what the time difference is between where it starts to rise and this point. We can expand out the, we can try and expand out the horizontal position to fit, fit this stuff on one screen. So now we're looking between there and there to get a good measurement for this. And we'll go back to the cursor type here, switch to time, and look for that difference to measure the time constant. So right about there to about there. And we measure 50.8 microseconds with this particular measurement, which is pretty close to the 50 microseconds that we expected. A couple more fun things that we can do with this. We can try and catch a discharging event of the capacitor as well. So instead of catching the charging event like this, let's see if we can catch the discharging event, where we disconnect the switch and see how long it takes for the capacitor to go back to zero volts. In that situation, we have a different resistance of 100 ohms instead of 50, so we expect twice the time constant, 100 microseconds instead of 50 microseconds. So let's first of all compress the time scale here, and now we're going to look for a discharging event. To, uh, to get this to work, we're going to need to set our trigger to be a little different. You can see the trigger menu that we've, uh, the trigger level that we have on the bottom right as we move this. So before, we were around here at the, at the bottom, close to, let's say, 200 millivolts, and that was great for catching it charging up, so that means when it rises above 200 millivolts on rising, uh, when it rises above 200 millivolts, that's when we're going to trigger and say, okay, catch this event. Now, to find this other event, we're going to need to go falling and disconnect. Now, the disconnect ones are a little bit tough to catch, so I think I find that works, what works best is to have the, the pin not quite inserted, just sort of like tapped in position and then let go, or maybe like on the wire and then let go. That's a good looking one. Okay. So, now that we've got our signal there, we can measure what the time constant is in this situation. So now we're looking for how long it takes to go, we can start from the top, how long it takes to go 63% of the way down. So that would be So how long it takes for it to go 37% of the way up. And for 2.5, we get 92, uh, 925 millivolts. So we're going to look for that signal on here. And if we put our measure menu here, or rather the cursor menu, that's what we want, cursor voltage, we're going to go this one to where we get to 92.5, I think we said, millivolts. Is that right? So e to the negative 1 times 2.5. Yeah, 920, 920 millivolts. There, so somewhere around this spot. So when we go back to type time, that spot, around there, which is our 100 microseconds. So everything makes sense, and we've got the discharging time constant too. So for the last part, to try and measure this, we can uh, see if we can get the capacitor to discharge across the scope and use that to figure out how much resistance the scope has. So let's get that charged up again. And now, to make this work, we can disconnect that and see if we can capture it. Now the scope should have a much 
<laughs> so you see it did it did move eventually. The scope should have a much higher resistance. So we expect that it has a, a, a resistance of around a mega ohm. And that means that we expect a time constant of more like one second. So now we've changed around the divisions here to instead of the microseconds per division that we were at before, we're going to look for a division on the order of a second. And let's see if we can charge that up and then discharge. Okay, expanding even more. Charge up, discharge. Okay. Give it some more time. Okay, it's armed, it's ready to go. We're going to wait till this clears. Triggered, so it's scanning. And there's the event. Okay. So, Again, for our 2.5, we're going to see how long it takes now. We can maybe even fit this into the same kind of a, of a position here. We need to check vertically for where it is that we get up to that level. So we're looking now for what time that division is. And that means right around there. So we're looking for... Uh, we found a time constant which is about one second and that's just what we expected if the scope probe has an impedance of one mega ohm. So indeed it does, which means one microfarad, one mega ohm, one second time constant and we've measured the impedance of the scope probe. And that's it. Thanks for watching Lab 3. I'll see you next time.